Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. So I've got a pretty cool fly for you today. This is number 33 in the Great Smoky Mountain series. This is called Wickham's Fancy Dry Fly. Now it wasn't created in the Smoky Mountains, but it's been popular there since the 1940s. It was actually created in Southern England in the 1880s by a guy named Dr. T.C. Wickham in Southern England from Winchester. He created it to fish on the chalk streams down there. It did very well. It's been very popular since. Now there's also a wet fly version of it, but the original was a dry fly, so that's what we're gonna do today. And I couldn't find a whole lot of history on the good doctor. Every time you search for it, really all you get is this fly. But I did find one interesting tidbit. Now you might recognize there are a handful of flies out there with fancy in the name. And according to the 1880s literature, a fly that was tied not to imitate any specific insect always got tagged with the word fancy on it. So it's kind of like what we today would call just a general attractor pattern. Back then they called it something, something fancy. So I think that was a pretty cool tidbit. Anytime you see a fly with fancy in the name, it's quite likely a very old fly, so check it out. Now one other point I wanna make, this fly is not really a beginner's fly. I mean, there's a, a couple of advanced techniques on it. I mean, you're, you're palmering a hackle over a smooth tensile body, and you're putting an old school wet fly wing on a dry fly, and then some more hackle. So there's some tricky concepts to it. I mean, the good news is even a shabbily tied fly like this can do very well for you. But don't get me wrong. If you're a beginner out there and you've never tied this and you wanna try it, do it, go for it. But don't get discouraged if it doesn't look good the first time. Not many of us get most flies right the first time. Just keep going, tie half a dozen of them, and I guarantee you number six is gonna look better than number one. Anyway, this is a pretty cool pattern tonight. I encourage you to give it a shot. I think you'll like it. Let's do it. So there you go, a Wickham's fancy dry fly version. Common sizes for this guy are 12, down as small as a 16. I'm gonna tie it on a 12, just a little bit easier to see. And I've got a standard length barbless dry fly hook. I'm using black thread and a 70 denier. I will take a base down to the start of the bend. Now for the tail, it's your brown or ginger, similar to what we're gonna be wrapping for a hackle, but just, just hackle fibers, uh, about 10 or so, the length of a body. So let's bring that back, and I'm gonna do it with one wrap. I'll show you why in a second. So I got one wrap holding that on top, and that, I want it a little bit longer than that, so I'll back it up and try that again. Okay, that's gonna look a little bit better right there. It's being held with one wrap. Now let's tie in a, a rib wire. Small wire, gold or brass will work. And I'm gonna make it the length of the body. See that? And I'm gonna put this next wrap of thread right in front of that other wrap. So now I've got two wraps holding the, the feather in, the fibers, and one wrap holding the wire rib. Now, flat mylar tinsel. This one's a size 14, the gold and silver kind and we'll catch this in with the gold toward the hook. So again, about the length of the body. So see that right there? And this third wrap is, just be careful, is right in front of those other two. And why I've done that instead of piling them on top of each other is it will help that back just be a little bit smoother. So before I take it up, I've got these, these excess fibers from the hackle are a little bit long. So I'm gonna reach in here and just trim them to where the front of my body is gonna be. Okay, that should work right there. Now just touch and turns, you leave that that wire and leave that mylar right where they are and if you're lucky your body will be smooth all the way up.
okay it's it's not perfectly smooth you can see where there's a little bit of a the wire wrapped around it there but it's pretty smooth it's smooth enough so next up let's wrap our, our body this tinsel the gold tinsel the gold side facing out just slightly more than touch and turns you want each one of them to overlap the previous one just a little Okay, when you get back up to the front, go ahead and catch it off. We'll take a look at that body. It's not perfectly smooth, but you know, we've got a lot going on over it with the rib and the hackle. So a little, a couple lumps there aren't gonna be a big deal. Just go ahead and secure this tinsel in and I'm going to take my thread back a couple of turns on top of it because we've got a fair amount going on up here at the head. We've got a hackle, a wing, and another hackle. So the first hackle we want to put down is just brown or ginger, dry fly hackle, pretty much size to match the hook, maybe slightly smaller. I've stripped off a little bit from the, the tip there, or the, the butt section, and I will lock it in two or three tight wraps. I'm gonna go ahead and snip this excess off before I take it back and a couple wraps to really lock it. Now we're just going to palmer this back. Get your, your wire ready because that's what we're going to, as soon as we get to the back, we're going to capture it in with that and wrap it back forward. So I'll take a couple of wraps, two probably up front, maybe three if you want, but I'm just going to go with two. So I'm laying the hackle down heavy up front. Now I'm going to palmer it back. Now up to you how close you want this palmering to be. Do you want it to be really bushy and a high floater or do you want it to be a little bit less bushy and maybe see more of that gold? So I think five wraps is going to be good. Now what I've, I'm, I'm still holding this, this feather pretty tight with my hand and I'm going to counter wrap this wire. I'll take one completely around in the back so I've got a full wrap in the back, and now it's pretty much caught in. I can let go of the feather, and you're going to zigzag this one up through here and try not to trap too many of these. You're probably going to trap a few, but you know the, the fewer the better. Okay, now when you've got it up front, my thread's not really hanging where I want, and I, I need it to be just a little bit farther back than that, so I'm gonna to have to spend a couple of wraps getting it back there. And then maybe two to capture this, this wire. Is that gonna be enough to hold it? Let's do one more. Now it's a dry fly with a lot going on, so thread economy is kind of important if you want it to look good. If you're like me and most of these are for fishing, it doesn't have to look perfect. Let's go ahead and snip this excess feather off right here. Okay, we've still got a decent looking tail and we've got some fibers pointing forward. So before I put the wing in, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit. It's not vital because we got, we're gonna put a hackle up front of it anyway. Now for the wings, mallard duck quill, gray. Now here's a trick I do. I take the same size hook, I put it in a hackle pliers and just reach up in here and grab it and pull it down right there. So that gives you the right size wing, particularly if you're doing a winged wet fly. In this case, you might want them to be just a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner than that. So what you can do, here's how the, the pros, the other pros typically do it the Barry Ord Clarks and Davy McPhails, they'll put them in their, their fingers like this, lay it flat, and then do it tent style. So get your length right there, and then just kind of push it down right there. Now that doesn't always work. So it's, I'm doing a pinch wrap now. I'm holding it pretty tight with my material hand, and I'm putting a wrap up in there, still tight with my material hand before I pull it down. 
And then I'm gonna do that one more time before I let go and then I'll take a look at it. So here's my moment of truth. Do those wings look okay? Yeah, there might be a little bit high, but we can probably fix that with just a, a couple. Let's do one more tight wrap right here and then a couple of medium tight wraps right there. And that might get it to lay down a little bit better. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that wing right there. Let's go ahead and snip the front part of it off. And you might wanna just push this up. Still got one more component with the hackle. So you push those butt ends up and then put a couple of wraps right here. You could also burn them off. A lot of people will singe them. I don't usually do that, but you could. Okay, so that wing looks okay. Now for the hackle. Just another feather from your dry fly hackle. Now here's something that I've been doing. So this is a feather, it's got some of the longer fibers up front, you see those? And then it quickly gets into the shorter fibers. So I'm tying it in and I'm only gonna make probably two, maybe three turns with this hackle up front. So what you can do after you do that, you don't wanna waste this whole feather. You can, we'll make two turns with this feather and then the rest of it, still another five or six inches, can be used for the palmer tackle of your next fly. So there we go. My thread is up there where I'm probably gonna close it off, finish it off. So let's see what two wraps right here does for us. We might want three. Or however many that was. If that's two, that's what I want. And if it's three, then that's gonna be fine. Just judge it based on the, the quality of the hackle you're using. Some of them, the barb density, the fiber density, I mean, is, you know, better than others. So I just cut that off and see this, I've still got quite a bit of feather right there, which can be the Palmer tackle for the next one. So, okay, the wings, I didn't mess them up too much. They're still coming up where I want, but I do need to clean up this head. So let's pull this back a little bit and put a few wraps right here. Just try to back it off of that eye. Got a couple of fibers right there that we're gonna have to trim but we've got enough room for our whip finish and a small drop of head cement. And just a little bit of cleanup. And we can call this guy done. Well, more cleanup than I'd like, but so be it. Get in here and snip these. So we'll have some room for our head cement and we'll still be able to get our tippet up through this eye and we'll still have quite a nifty little fish and fly. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. I'm about to do the drawing for the Mike Valla Tying the Founding Flies book. So this was only open today. We've got 18 folks that were interested. All Outdoor Nova Scotia, Ron, Benjamin, Chris, Lee, Zoran, Jamie, Tom, Mark, James, Clyde, Dan. Uh, a couple of new names on here, a couple that I recognize from previous giveaways. So let's do this thing. We've got the 18 names right here. All I have to do is push one button and we get a name. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Chris Hillier. Chris Hillier wins the book for tonight. That's uh, awesome, Chris. Check your email or if you haven't gotten anything from me, send me an email so I can get your address and get this book in the mail to you. So that's it, everybody. If you didn't win, hey, stick around. We're only a couple of days away from November. We got an amazing one gonna hit the streets on November 1st. So it's the all Smoky Mountain fly tying material set. So that's it, my friends. Thank you. We'll see you next time.